Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's try something totally different and do some gravity dyes using marbles and wiffle balls. So I wondered what it would be like if I drew a diagonal line across the shirt and instead of tying the diagonal line with sinew or something like that, if I would put wiffle balls in that area and if I put marbles in that area. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my straight edge and draw a diagonal line from one shoulder of the shirt to the opposite corner of the hem. Then I'm going to use a whole bunch of marbles and some rubber bands. Initially, I thought I would use both some larger and just like, I guess, regular size marbles. I decided not to use the larger marbles though and just use the regular ones. I'm going to place a marble underneath this line and then wrap a rubber band around it from the top to hold the marble under the shirt. I'm going to continue this process until I have marbles all up this line. When my kids were little, they used to like to take and do a lot of marble designs on their tie-dye shirts. They would just kind of sporadically put them around the shirt, do all kinds of designs with marbles. But I haven't used marbles in tie-dye for quite a while. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of dust these off and try a couple designs with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and dye this marble design before I do the wiffle ball one. For this design, I'm only going to use Spicy Plum from Pro Chemical and Dye. I've placed this shirt down inside of a colander which I purchased from the TikTok shop. It's plastic and it's pretty small. It's expandable though, so what I've done is I've placed some plastic sawhorses outside, some long pieces of vinyl guttering in between the sawhorses, and then I've placed this colander in between the vinyl guttering. The shirt is still damp and I'm going to lightly sprinkle the spicy plum over the top of the marbles. Then I'm going to place a little bit more additional dry soda ash on top and a layer of ice. I've included a few process photos to show you how the ice melted and the dye moved through the shirt. After this first layer of ice melted, I came back and added several more layers of ice. At one point in time, I actually took the shirt out of the colander and draped it across one of the pieces of vinyl guttering to see if maybe I could get the dye to flow a little bit better down the sides of the shirt. I do think that helps some, but I still wasn't quite happy with the amount of dye flow. So I placed the shirt back in the colander added some more ice on top, and added just a light sprinkle of the dye over the top of the ice, and a little bit more soda ash. By the time all that ice melted, I was content with the amount of saturation and how much the dye had moved. Okay, so let's go on and do the wiffle ball shirt, and then I'll tell you more about the processing of these shirts. For the wiffle ball shirt, I'm going to also draw a diagonal line on the shirt, but this time I'm going to use some baseball size wiffle balls. On this shirt, because the wiffle balls are much larger, I was only able to use four wiffle balls on the shirt. On this shirt, I'm going to use another one of Pro Chemical and Dye's great color splitting colors called Stormy Sky. I'm using the same setup for this shirt. The only difference is, is I'm using a little bit larger colander because it's a little deeper and will fit the wiffle balls better. I purchased this colander at TJ Maxx. 
but I did find it out on Amazon and I've left a link to it down below in the description for this video. If you haven't ever shopped TJ Maxx for items like colanders and other tie-dye things, they're actually a pretty good outlet for that. I've found quite a few different kinds of colanders which work great for gravity dyeing and other ice dye projects. I'm going to sprinkle the dye over the top like I did with the other shirt, add some more soda ash over the top of the dye, and then the ice. And you can kind of see the white hanging down over to the left of this shirt. That's the other shirt that I'm ice dyeing at the same time. I have them both set up side by side, just enough distance between the two so that the colors don't mix. I've included process photos for this shirt as well, and I basically did the same process. Because they were side by side, when I added a layer of ice to one shirt, I added a layer to the other shirt. So I added several layers of ice. I did end up taking this shirt out of the colander as well and placing it on the vinyl guttering. And I eventually added a little bit more ice and dye over the top. Once the very last layer of ice melted, I took both of these colanders and placed them down inside of a plastic tote one that had a metal rack down in the bottom so that the colanders didn't sit on the bottom of the tote. I placed the lid on the tote and then I placed it outside and allowed it to be outside and these shirts to process for about 24 hours. It was toasty outside and so it got nice and steamy inside of that plastic container. The last process photo shows the entire setup that I used for both of these shirts. You'll see one colander at one end of the guttering and this colander at the other end of the guttering. So after about 24 hours, I went ahead and rinsed the shirts. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I went ahead and took all the marbles and all the wiffle balls out of the shirts, Warm the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of rinsing for a long time, I added some really hot water to my utility sink, a little bit of blue Dawn dish soap, placed both of the shirts in the hot water together and allowed them to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was remaining almost clear. Then I put both of the shirts inside of my washing machine and I washed them using a hot water cycle. Okay, so both the shirts have been washed, dried, and ironed, and let's see what they look like. Okay, so this is the marble shirt, and what do you guys think about this one? I don't know how I feel about this shirt. It's not my favorite. I love Spicy Plum. I think it's really pretty, and I think it has some really pretty color splits. But the design going across the front, I, I'm just not sure about that. I don't think it's horrible, but I'm probably not going to do this one again. It's, this one's just not my favorite. I, I don't know why. It may be the color paired with the design, but I'm just not a huge fan. So let's see what the wiffle ball shirt looks like. This one I think is a little bit better. I think that the larger blobs are a little bit more pleasing to look at than all the really small little spots on the other shirt. I also really love this color. Stormy Sky is also a great color splitter and I think it's a beautiful color as well. When I first rinsed this shirt out, I thought it was just one big huge dark line with zero definition where I put the wiffle balls. I was very pleasantly surprised after I rinsed it really well and washed it that I actually do have some dimension from those wiffle balls. It kind of looks like little flower blobs going up the shirt. So I don't mind this one. I think this one is pretty. I don't know that I would repeat it, but I don't mind this one. When you look at both of them together, I by far prefer the wiffle ball shirt and I'm just not a fan of that marble shirt. I don't know why, but I'm just not. You know, I love to experiment and I've always said that I'm going to try to be transparent and show you the good, the bad, the pretty, the not so pretty. And this is the not so pretty. 
Sometimes when you experiment with things, they turn out fantastic. And other times you're just kind of like, eh, about the experiment. And that's kind of how I am with this one. So I'm probably not going to make or repeat this experiment. I think it might look decent if I had like a mid-range size wiffle ball. The marble size shirt is a size medium and the wiffle ball shirt is a size 3X. If I tried to do the wiffle balls on the medium size shirt, I think it would probably only get a couple wiffle balls on the shirt. So I think using maybe a golf ball size would work better. I don't know. I just wasn't impressed enough that I want to mess around with this design very much and try to make it work. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And for those of you who don't like it when I use red for gravity dyes, I am so sorry by that first shirt. I mean, that first shirt, I think would be a great Halloween shirt. Honestly, I think you could wear that with like a Halloween costume and it would look fantastic. I just realized if I would have rotated that and made the line going up and down, it would have looked like a spine, which, I mean, that could be a thing if you wanted to make some sort of a Halloween costume, make those marbles go up and down the shirt, and it looks like the little knobs on a spine. So you might not want to replicate this shirt, but if you've enjoyed my funky experiment, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it, and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.